Welcome back to another Tech Minds video. In this video, I'm going to share with you my first QSO through Oscar 100 satellite. Now, before I begin, I'm going to explain what Oscar 100 is and then go through the equipment needed to receive and transmit through the transponder. In this video, I'll only be talking about the narrow band features. So Oscar 100 is a phase four transponder on the SHOW-2 satellite hovering around 35,000 kilometers above Central Africa. You can see here from this image where SHOW-2 is located and the red line indicates its line of sight path from my home location. Now the downlink, i.e. the frequency that receive its output on is 10.4 gigahertz. The uplink, the frequency we transmit onto Oscar 100 is 2.4 gigs. So it's basically like a repeater that takes a 2.4 gigs input and has a 10 gigs output. Now as Oscar 100 is a transponder, the narrowband portion has a 500 kilohertz bandwidth, which means multiple users can use the satellite at the same time. Not only can you transmit SSB phone, there are also certain bandwidth allocations for digital and CW transmissions. You'll also notice three continuous beacons, one at the start of the transponder bandwidth, one around the middle, and then one on the far right. These beacons are generated from the ground station located in Western Germany and beamed up to Oscar 100. The beacons consist of CW or PSK transmissions, which you can use various pieces of software to decode. See some of my other videos on QO100 if you're interested in decoding these. So let's start looking at the hardware I'll be going to use for my first Oscar 100 QSO. As you can see from this photo, I have an abundance of trees in my line of sight to the satellite, which makes it quite difficult to receive a really good signal. But over the past year, I've been playing around with different size satellite dishes, uh, different mounting locations. Now, unfortunately, I'm unable to install the dish on my home walls, so I have to make do with ground level in my rear garden. I recently found an area towards the rear of my garden which peeped through some trees to give me a better chance of getting my 2.4 gigahertz signal up to Oscar 100. So the first piece of hardware I need is a 2.4 gigs patch antenna. Now this has been designed so that it will slide into an LMB. Now I purchased this kit from Passion Radio and I used a blowtorch to solder all the parts together. Here's what it looks like once it's soldered together. Notice how I've soldered the larger plate on the wrong side. In hindsight, I should have soldered it on the other side so there was no solder in between the two plates. I'll eventually buy a VNA which will cover 2.4 gigs in the near future and then I'll be able to test how accurate it is on its SWR range. Now for the LMB, I'm going to use a Bullseye LMB. Now this is extremely stable and for me didn't need any modifications to the TCXO when used in conjunction with SDR consoles geostationary satellite tracking feature. First I made a hole in the top cap so I could slide the waveguide section of the patch antenna directly into the LMB. As the LMB is flanged, the waveguide doesn't go all the way in, which means it sits nicely in place. I then used some hot glue around the copper waveguide and the LMB's plastic cap to stop any water getting into the LMB itself. Now this photo shows the finished product with it mounted in the LMB holder, and all I now need to do is connect the cables and attach it to the aligned dish. So just to recap over what's going on here, we have the patch antenna on the right, which is used for transmitting 2.4 gigahertz. It will use the dish as a reflection and beam the signal to QO100. The one thing to point out here is that the patch antenna is actually left-hand circular polarized. Oscar 100 requires a right-hand circular polarized signal, but because we're bouncing off the dish, the signal gets switched from left-hand to right-hand when it leaves the dish and heads towards Oscar 100. Now the LMB on the left will be used for receiving the 10 gigahertz signal and converting it down to something more within range and usable. Now the IF output at 10.4 gigahertz is around 739.5 megahertz, which means most SDR receivers can easily receive this frequency. So here we are in the shack, we've got the software running, that's the microphone that I'll be using as well. Now let's go over here and have a look at what we've got electronics wise. Okay, so this box here, this is actually feeding a couple of things. So we've got a 12 volt input there on the bottom left. That goes into a buck converter. I've tuned it so that the buck converter gives us a five volt output. Now that goes off and feeds the preamp between my Lime SDR and the Chinese amp. Um, we've also got 12 volts that goes into the bias T. Now that's to power the LMB because the LMB will need power. We have the LMB coax coming in there on the left into the bias T and then out the other side where we've got a 739 megahertz IF output, which goes off to my SDR receiver, which as mentioned before, I'm using a Lime SDR mini. So that's the receive side. Let's have a look at the transmit side. 
So we've got the Lime SDR Mini there on the right hand side. Now that is used for RX and TX for receive and transmit. It's full duplex, which is great. So I can transmit and listen at the same time. In the middle, we have a CN0417 preamp, and it also has a 2.4 gigahertz filter on it as well, which is great. Over on the left-hand side, the sort of square black box, that's a Chinese 8-watt Wi-Fi amp. In reality, it's probably around 2 watts. But with this particular setup, with the drive level that's coming from the Lime SDR Mini, going through the preamp into the Chinese amplifier, I'm getting around 1.2 watts output. Now that is being fed into some RG8 mini coax, which is around 20 meters long. And the amount of loss is tremendous on that. On the other end of it, which is feeding the amplifier in the garden, I'm getting around 30 milliwatts. But let's go ahead and have a look at what we've got in the garden. So here we have a few runs of coax. We're actually only using two here, one to feed the dish and one to receive from the dish back to the shack. Um, here we have a just a regular, that's actually a CB power supply, just a few amps uh, there on the left. So it's converting mains power down to 13.8, which is feeding into this DC to DC step up converter uh, from 13.8 volts up to 24 volts. The reason for that is because the amp that I've got attached to the patch antenna uh, requires 24 volts um, to, to power it. So as we move over here, we can see the patch antenna and the LMBs already attached to the dish. And let's just get rid of this plastic bag. And we can see here the amplifier that I'm using. This is a five watt amplifier, around four watts out, uh, a maximum drive of 200 milliwatts. Now the drive that I'm putting in is probably around 35 milliwatts. So I'm probably getting around one watt out. So it's not particularly uh, strong or efficient at the moment but like I said this is just like an initial test you can see here this is the view from where my dish is and what we can see up through the sky now I'm trying to aim in that little v shape to try and point it towards Oscar 100 without the trees getting involved okay so back in the shack we're going to make our transmission now up to QA100 and have a QSO with somebody now this is pre-recorded and obviously um, what I just need to just make you aware of is that I'm on the Lime SDR Mini that I'm using uh, I do not have a very stable TCXO it's just the standard one that's actually on the board itself so what that means is you're going to hear my audio coming back from the satellite uh, we're going to switch between using the Web SDR at Goon Hilly and also the receive audio that I'm receiving directly via the satellite dish that's in my garden and you're going to notice that the pitch of my voice is going to be changing up and down because it's not stable you need an ultra stable transmission anyway let's go ahead and uh, i'll play a few minutes of this qso Juliet. Or, God, Juliet. Start again. <laughs> george 8 texas zanzibar juliet golf 8 tango zulu juliet to that 
but uh, August is when I started, and then I've had a few weeks here, then nothing, then a few more weeks, and then a, then nothing, and then a few more weeks. So on and off. So uh, I'm not um, on this satellite all the time. Uh, yes, you are another one who's using one of these SDR receivers. The Pluto, uh, sorry, the Pluto appears to be very popular on this uh, satellite, and the Lime, of course, is another one that I have heard of being used. And yes, you are right. Your frequency drifting a little bit. I just need to just give you a slight tweak on the RIT here to just bring you back into uh, correct frequency but that's not a problem. Um, what I'm running here is the ICOM 9700 uh, that goes into a CUNA electronics up converter running with about 10 watts at the dish speed uh, that's a one meter dish with the usual patch feed and uh, I've got the QNO electronics down converter at the dish and that comes back into the 9700 so it's all hardware based um, okay the ICOM is an SDR receiver but no SDR on the computer and all 10 megahertz locked to eliminate frequency drift. The one thing I have heard with, especially with the Pluto, is that people get um, a GPS DO and lock the reference oscillator in that to uh, stop it drifting. I suspect that the Lime probably does something similar, so you'll, you really need to uh, find a GPS DO to lock your Lime to uh, give you a nice stable frequency mat. So uh, that's uh, all well and good. Uh, can you just repeat your QRA locator again, please? I've just realized I've not quite got that written down correct. So if you just go again with that. Uh, back to you from Golf 8, Tango, Zulu, Julian. Yeah, sure, no problem in my case, so hopefully you can hear me okay. Um, okay, so I'm in India, Oscar, 9-1, Papa, Quebec. So it's India, Oscar, 9-1, Papa, Quebec. Uh, you, uh, you sounded really nice and clear there on, the, uh, on your last transmission, and uh, nice and stable. Um, I, I am a bit disappointed that the uh, Lime SDR Mini has this issue with drift, but I think that this was more of a, a test to see if I could actually reach uh, TI-100 with, with a transmission and then at least have some kind of QSO. Um, this is actually going to form part of a video. Um, I run a YouTube channel called Tech Lines, and uh, I'm going to be doing a video on the setup and also my progress as I go on with QI 100. And yeah, you're right. You were the first, uh, my first actual QSO, which is quite nice. <laughs> it's quite nice to be able to talk to somebody. So I'm just wondering if you might be able to tell me. Um, how does my signal strength appear to you compared to other people? For me, it looks like I'm pretty weak going into QI100. Um, well, there we go. That's my first QSO uh, up on to QI100. Now, there's actually quite a lot longer uh, video, but I don't want to bore you guys with the rest of that, uh, especially as I'm sounding a bit like Mickey Mouse uh, in in that video. Now, a couple of good things is I've got a Pluto uh, coming from analog devices, which is great. And as the gentleman there that I was talking to, that also suffers with um, 
drift out of the box, but I've also ordered a new TCXO, which will make it ultra stable. And the great thing about that is that I can connect it to an ethernet cable. So I should be able to run it all nicely contained, but I'll make another video on that if you guys are interested in seeing uh, my progression with a QA100 ground station from my QTH. Anyway, I just want to say a massive thanks to my current patrons. You guys uh, rock, you support the channel and uh, it's really appreciated. I just want to say a massive thanks to obviously all my subscribers. You may have noticed that I recently hit 23,000 subscribers. So I just want to say a massive thank you to all of you that have subscribed to the channel and enjoy my content. Until the next video, guys, you take care, stay safe, stay indoors, and I'll see you in the next video.